All right. So I wanted to talk about fear of being seen as a woman and fear of abandonment. Uh, that's kind of my my uh, general idea. But I did also have other things in mind. I think what what actually prompted this uh, was watching my videos that I've recorded and noticing the self-consciousness. Uh, I was afraid to make videos in the, in the... Before I started making videos, I was very afraid to make videos. And uh, part of that was just the the general kind of vague kind of fear of exposing myself uh, the other part of that was being very self-conscious of my voice and thinking that I had a, a very obnoxious voice a kind of voice that would just turn people off uh, that kind of thing and then I when I started watching the videos that I was recording I noticed that uh, my voice wasn't nearly as bad as I thought it was, uh, but I when I, I noticed that when I was talking that I was very measured. Uh, my voice was very not set free. It wasn't like it was just coming up from the base of myself and just out into the world. It was almost like it was being filtered through this uh, this self consciousness mechanism, which is like to me a it's almost like I, I have a camera on myself I'm kind of not liking this wig at the moment I like it from this angle as soon as I turn my head I'm like ah. uh, but it's like a almost like a uh, a security camera so that's kind of how I think of it uh, that's monitoring every kind of movement that I make uh, not this and I don't mean just like with my hands movement but uh, thoughts uh, things that I say, how I say them, uh, and uh, I feel like this is, this is, to me, a big part of why I've been miserable for my, most of my life. Um, uh, I think in one of my videos I mentioned that I don't know how to have fun, that I don't it's been, I don't know, I mean, in the last 45 years of my life, I don't remember really having a good time. Uh, I don't remember, even, I think I mentioned it in the, how I came to the idea that I'm trans video, that uh, even my like most cherishable memories, uh, or cherished memories, were... You know, just not. Uh, I don't think I don't think of them as really good times. And in most cases, it was me under the influence of some drug. Uh, and it was kind of specifically because while I was under that influence, I was not that self consciousness kind of went away, and I was kind of uh, let loose for a little while. But, you know, and there are, there, this is what happens when you don't prepare. But I feel like being unprepared in some way is kind of the point, the whole point. <laughs> because I'm trying to get over uh, that, that not the necessarily the need to prepare, but the need to monitor and censor myself and... Uh, the need to protect myself uh, from my own mistakes or whatever you want to call it. Uh, so that is one of the reasons why I, do, I actually don't want to prepare for these videos. Uh, I've thought that maybe I should. It might be better for you. It might be better for me. Because sometimes, a lot of times, I'll forget about something. Uh, after, you know, while I'm talking, I, you know, I might spend 30 minutes talking and then after I go back and watch the videos I, I realize I forgot this and that and uh, but that's okay I think um, 
Hi. <sighs> so, yeah, fear of being seen as a woman and the fear of being abandoned. Uh, so, I, I've, I've already gone over kind of the issue with my mother of her sending me away when I was a, a kid. I was eight years old. Uh, I don't know if that's where it comes from. Um, but when I'm with people, around people, uh, I have, I, I'm in constant fear and it is a fear basically of being abandoned. It's a fear that the person, people or person is not going to like me, that they, like I said before, that if I, if they were to see into me or if I were to show myself to them, uh, that they would either abandon me, reject me, harass me, uh, attack me, ridicule me, uh, or whatever. And uh, I'm not entirely sure where that comes from. Uh, I, as a kid growing up, I already knew that it wasn't okay for boys to act like girls. And when I say I already knew that, I don't mean that uh, I believed it. I just, I mean that uh, it was like already, I knew that like if I dress, if my parents saw me dress as a girl, they would not be happy. Or if I went to school dressed as a girl, I would I would be. Uh, I already knew that I would be like laughed at, made fun of, uh, and I don't know where I got that idea from. Uh, I have mentioned before that you know it was kind of expressed to me in, in certain in ways, like it, when I was playing baseball. I remember people saying things to other, either me or maybe to other people, you know, saying things like "You're throwing like a girl." Uh, being told, I was told once that I was sitting like a girl, which was, to me that's not bad, then that's not necessarily, you know, like a, a red flashing light that's saying you can't act like a girl, uh, but apparently that, that red flashing light was already there, uh, and I don't really know where it came from. I don't know if, uh, at a time when I was too young to remember, if I acted like a girl and uh, somebody scolded me or uh, whatever and or maybe I just overheard somebody talking um, maybe as a kid I heard, I heard something and it just put the idea in my head or maybe it was even just a kind of telepathic kind of like unconscious sense uh, which in some cases I, I feel like might actually be true uh, because like when I was when I was younger and I was with my family I remember thinking or feeling that it just was not safe for me to expose myself and my family specifically never said I don't remember anyone like my father uh, or uh, this was I'm talking about after the divorce and after I was sent to live with my father. Uh, even then, I don't remember him or his his new wife or any of my my siblings, half siblings, step siblings, and things like that. I don't remember any of them ever really saying or or uh, saying that it that it would be wrong for me to act like a girl or anybody to act like a girl. And so. But it, I felt, and now I, I felt like I just couldn't, it just, I just couldn't be myself. I felt like uh, it wasn't necessarily specifically acting like a girl. Uh, but I, like even, I remember dancing, or uh, my brothers were dancing. And uh, I was just sitting on the couch. Not dancing, and I remember thinking, kind of like I wanted to dance. But there was something in me that was just like, don't do it. It's not safe. Uh, and, uh, and I, when I think about like, what, what was I afraid of them seeing? You know, if I'd gotten up and started dancing, I don't think it was a fear that I would be dancing 
badly. Uh, I don't think it was that. Uh, but at that time, I really didn't know. I didn't really... Like I said, it was just kind of a general sense that that I that I that I had to censor myself, and I spent most of my life. And I don't know if you can imagine if you've never been in this situation, but I spent most of my life uh, basically at work. Uh, it was it was quite it was not fun. <clears throat> um, meeting people, I felt like. I was, I was almost like a scientist in a way, where I would I would try different things with people. Like if I knew that people liked talking about this or that, I would talk about this or that. Uh, or I might try telling a joke or uh, stuff like that. And basically, the way that I I was approaching it was, I'm going to do something. If they respond well, I know that works. Uh, that this is how to get people to like you, <clears throat> or this is what I, this is this was my kind of strategy. It's basically a kind of a trial and error strategy, and uh, it was I was basically always at work with people. I was never when I was with people in relationships. It was it was a constant. I mean, it was like a job. Uh, it was uh, basically the job was to. Uh, not displease the other person, um, which you know that that's not that doesn't help your self-esteem. That doesn't make you feel good about yourself when you're constantly uh, avoiding trying to displease other people, especially when some people are very happy to show you that they're displeased with you if they know that it gives them 